Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I just ordered this KK Moon um, oscilloscope. So it's a DSO Pro digital oscilloscope, handheld, mini palm size apparently. I mean, there's a bunch of these around the internet, loads of them. This for me was the second cheapest one on on um, on Amazon. And I only got it, I could have got it for actually even cheaper, but I got it on Amazon because the good thing about Amazon is obviously you can just return it for whatever reason and they don't say anything so yeah this is it tiny right it's um it doesn't weigh anything I should get some scales it's got a micro USB charger and look how long that is that's a really long USB so this, it comes with a battery, which apparently you could, apparently you can run the battery. Oh, that's a nice screen. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, apparently you can run the battery for three hours, which is amazing because f me sitting down at my desk doing something on a circuit for three hours. I don't personally, <laughs> this never happened. It hasn't happened to me yet. And, uh, yeah, I don't see that happening soon. We've got a manual here. I usually wouldn't bother reading the manual, but in this instance, I don't really know. This is the first oscilloscope I've ever turned on. So make it out what you will. I'm a second year student doing electrical engineering, but considering we're in, you know, 2020, you know, everything's online and so you should see the memes for all of us online students. We aren't learning anything practical, that's for sure. So I could tell you all of the uh, the theory side of oscilloscopes because you learn about that. <laughs> but as for actually using this, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to use it. But the display is a 2.4 inch, so it's tiny. I mean, look, that's my Fitbit. You know, it's not that far, <laughs> it's not that far off in size. Um, yeah, so display is 2.4 inch. Apparently the resolution is 320 by 240. And I mean, that's it's good enough for me. That's all right. Look at that. That's actually a really nice display. People said apparently like at certain angles you couldn't read it, but Okay, I see what you mean. Like from there, I can't, I can't read that, but that's fine. I can read that, can read that, can read that, can read that. I mean, how many angles do you need to be able to read to read from? Yeah. I mean, this is good enough for me. So uh, these, uh, this, this oscilloscope, it's just, it's obviously just made in China. Look, so the 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 Amazon listing says KK Moon. But I can't see any KK Moon branding on it at all. As far as I know, these are just basic oscilloscope kits that are sold out of AliExpress in China. And then brands buy them. And what they do is they basically just write like their own manual kind of thing for it. I mean, this might not even have KK Moon on it either. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't even make, write their own manual. So let's let's read some of the questions because then you can tell if it's a rubbish translation. So why why the measured two hundred twenty volt waveform is not very standard sine wave distortion? <laughs> you can see it's just a translation, isn't it? So this is obviously written in Chinese by someone who knows what they're talking about and then converted using Google Translate into English. So answer the city electric power grid. What if you live in the town? Um, generally has pollution. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we've got, like, you know, it's coal powered, so that's what's causing distortion. <laughs> uh, I assume they mean noise. Uh, contains more high order harmonic components. These harmonics superposition on the sine wave will show the distorted sine wave, normal phenomenon. <laughs> the general city waveform is distorted, and the oscilloscope itself is not related. Yeah, so, I mean, let's be honest, if you read that, you can understand what's being said, right? And I will. I will sit down and read this whole thing because, like I said, I have no experience with oscilloscopes whatsoever. 
Um, okay, so obviously, as you can see, it's just a single input, right? So there aren't, you know, it's not dual channel or anything. I will be getting a better one than this. And I do have an old analog one, but for now, I just want to just measure one output for one project that I've got going on. So I wanted to just go with something basic. So someone in the review said that, in Amazon reviews, that apparently can measure a waveform of around 5 megs, no problem. So if that's the case, that's more than good enough for me. So this It comes with a 5 megahertz bandwidth. Now, in case you don't know what that means, the range of the oscilloscope or well, the range of frequencies that your oscilloscope can measure accurately is the bandwidth. So if you think about, I don't know, zero hertz all the way up to 2000 hertz, that would be your bandwidth. So this has got a five megahertz bandwidth. To put that into perspective, a low quality oscilloscope would have like 100 megahertz and a decent quality oscilloscope would have like 500 megahertz. So this is that. Uh, five megahertz so you're talking about it's a hundred times worse than a good oscilloscope <laughs> in terms of its uh in terms of its uh, bandwidth which is funny and then the second thing that you're going to care about is the sampling rate so a basic oscilloscope would have a one gigahertz sample rate this thing has got 20 megahertz so yeah it's a uh, i mean for example, like a good a, re a good oscilloscope would have five or ten gigahertz, and a really good one, you know, would be more than that. So you're again talking about, you know, fifty times worse, <laughs> basically. But the reality is, look, if you're watching this video, and um, for myself personally, I've got, I just don't, I don't need a powerful one, and um, like I said, I have no experience using oscilloscopes because university is closed. You can't go on campus. And if you do, there's all these rules and whatnot. It's just crazy. So I don't, I just want to use an oscilloscope and just get comfortable using one. So for me, it doesn't, didn't really make sense to go and spend 200 pounds on a big giant oscilloscope lab bench one. That's ultimately just going to be used to just make my YouTube videos look better. If you think about it, that's what most people are going to use their scopes for. Uh, so my philosophy, whenever I'm buying gear, whatever it is, so it's the same when I bought, for example, this uh, power supply that I've got here. So with this power supply, whenever I buy any sort of gear, I always buy the cheapest one that I can possibly get as long as it's not going to burn down my house. And so I'll buy the cheapest one that I can get and I'll use that and use it and use it up until the quality of the product, meaning that the, like the cheapness of it, how rubbish it is, up until it starts to bug me. So if I'm trying to use this and I just can't do what I want to do on it and it causes me any sort of problems, then I'll step one level up and I'll get a slightly better one. So instead of a five megahertz bandwidth, I might go to a 20 megahertz bandwidth. Instead of a 20 uh, megahertz sampling rate, I might go to a 100 megahertz sampling rate. And so I'll go one level up each time until the quality no longer bugs me. I'm just not... Yeah, I'm just not that excited about spending 700 pounds on an oscilloscope. So this one cost me 40. I'm more than happy with it. The one that I'm probably going to get next is a 200 pound oscilloscope. So this one's a fifth of the price. It makes sense for me to go with this over the um, the 200 pound one. I'm just wondering if the screen can easily be damaged. I'm just pressing it. I'm pressing it quite hard and it's not moving. So that's all right. Can you open it? No, the battery, no, that's nice, the battery came full. All right, so let's try and see if I can test out some sort of signal. All right, so I've got a super simple circuit here. Basically, the premise of it is I've got this um, USB power board where basically it supplies five volts to these rails. So it supplies five volts plus and minus, right? So I've got it go into a, a push button where I'm going to press the button and then it'll turn the LED on and then obviously send to ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oscilloscope. I'm going to connect this uh, negative end to ground. And then I'm going to take the positive end and stick it between the LED and the resistor. There, like so. 
Okay, let's turn on the oscilloscope. It boots very quickly. Look at that. It's probably a second to boot, which is crazy. So turn on my signal now. And you can see it's kind of reacting to something. It's saying that we've got a 44 millivolt uh, RMS value. So now when I press this, the light should turn on. And so now, if you look here, you can see the voltage level raising, right? You can see it's going from a 0% duty cycle there to a 100% duty cycle there. So what I need to do is, if you look up here, it's got 10 microseconds. So if I go, if I keep pressing left here, I want to go, because obviously for us to, we can't fathom, you know, 10 microseconds. So we're at 100 milliseconds there. So if we go now to two seconds, and then now when I press the LED and turn it on, turn it off, on, on, off, you can see now much more clearer the wave. So now, obviously it's tiny. Let's zoom in. So you got 10x, and there you go. So I don't have a function generator yet, I've ordered one, but you can see here, super easy, you can make your own square wave, just like that. Okay, yeah, so I mean this is the, my first time using a physical oscilloscope, I understand how they work in theory, mostly because I've been using multi-sim, but yeah, I mean, for me this is a nice oscilloscope, this does the job for me, I'm gonna, I haven't built what I want to build yet which is the reason why I bought this, but I will build it and then I'll be able to see if it's really worthwhile or not. But for now, I mean, I'm happy to keep it. Don't have any issues with it. Let's go run, stop. Okay, run again, auto. Okay, so now can I move this up and down? That's what I want to know. Ah, okay, nice. So I can change the level. So we're at 240 volts here. So when I'm pressing it, it's getting a tiny spike. But then if I go, so 28 volts, you get a giant one. 66 volts is going to be a smaller one. Got it, got it, got it. I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, so now how do I want to change this thing again. Mode. And then now I can move down and up. Nice, okay, okay, got it. So I can bring the wave down here and just do the same up here. I mean, I see why you would do this if you had multiple waves, but I don't know why you would do this if you only had one wave. And obviously it's only one input, so. I don't know, it beats me. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. This is good enough for me. So hopefully once I get better probes, then I'll be able to, to show a, uh, AC mains as well, but for now, the max voltage that this can take is 40 volts, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't make sense for me to um, wouldn't make sense for me to <laughs> try and stick AC mains through these wires. They'd probably melt. There's my tiny square wave, and then I can stop it. And then now can I analyze? How would I zoom in to analyze? So mode, can I zoom in? Yeah, so I've got a lot to learn here in terms of, let's check night mode. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. I have night mode and everything, so. It's cool that it's got night mode. Um, so I can save the wave. Interesting. So would I be able to export the wave? Now that would be interesting. So, okay, so I save the wave. Save, complete, now view. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I can then view that wave at a later date. That's cool. Okay, and then how would I, how would you go back? Delete. Okay. 
it would be really nice to know if I can export, if I can save a wave and export it. I'm going to actually try to do that. But yeah, so I'm happy with this. Very, very happy with it. Let me know what you think. It's uh, 39, I think £37.50 I paid. It was like 5% off. So £37.50 for this. I mean, to me, it's, uh, it's £37 is actually still a lot of money for me to, to pay for an oscilloscope. But it was the cheapest one that I could... I mean, there was another one for £33. But this had a better button display suit. So I went with this. So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, it's, this is the KK Moon one. Not not that it really makes a difference, I don't think. I think what if you find this design, it's going to be the same. Regardless of whether it's on eBay, Amazon, or AliExpress. So, yeah, just go with it, man. I'm, I'm very happy with it. And, yeah, I shall see you guys in the next one. Peace.